Hi, I'm Steve Shelburne, owner and operator of Shelburne RV here in beautiful Cleveland, Tennessee. Well, good morning. Welcome back to Shelburne RV. It's a bright Monday morning. I'm I'm always late getting my videos going. It's been uh, I had a ton of I had a ton of voicemails this morning, um, and a ton of messages from you guys. Talked to several of you on the phone already this morning. Thanks for watching. Thanks for thanks for commenting. So uh, the ultimate advantage you guys saw where we did a video on that one. Oh, it's been. It's been several videos back. He's having basement air problems, so he's actually back for us to look at that. So Mr. Lewis is up here working on that. Uh, George from GNL Services is here to see me on that dual therm. Let's go up here and see what Mr. George has got going on. Well, all right, as you can see, uh, Mr. Lewis, he ain't playing around. He's done got the basement air out of that one. So I'm sure he's in here doing a little bit of looking at that. Let's go in here and see what's going on with that this morning. I know Mr. George from GNL Services called me just a minute ago. Him and Mr. Mann are up here going to help us take a look at this. Uh, help us take a look at this uh, dual therm basement air. So as you can see, there's Mr. George and there's Mr. Matt. If you haven't gone on and liked, uh, Mr. George has actually got his own YouTube channel. You know, you get to go out and see him work on residential uh, air conditioners. In my mind, it's hard to do. I don't do that kind of work, so I stick to the stuff that's easy to work on. But go on there and check George's videos out. He's uh, he's got some real interesting videos on uh, residential HVAC. So we're going to dive into this thing and see what's going on. I'll show you what's going on here in just a second. Okay, well, Mr. George and I have talked about this, and he feels like right down here, this capillary tube. Let's see if I can show this to you. This capillary tube right here has got a problem. Okay, let's see if I show you this right here. So we're gonna be replacing this capillary tube all the way back down to uh, the outdoor coil. He feels like there's a plug, something when that, new, when that compressor went nuclear, something inside that um, has, has gotten back in that system and plugged that up. So uh, he's gonna come back up next week. We're going to, cause it's very specific about the size and uh, the length, cause that's obviously our metering device. So he's gonna be back up here in a couple days and we're gonna change it out. So here's the basement air out of this ultimate advantage. Now Lewis ran this a couple times on the, on the test bench here and it ran perfect. And then the third time we did it, the fan was locked up. So obviously got a problem somewhere in the fan motor assembly. So as you can see, Mr. Lewis is gonna, he's gonna swap that out with a new fan motor. And we updated uh, the capacitor right there. We're gonna change that and update those two, but uh, this will get put back in, should be good to go. Okay, so I've got, I have my vacuum machine out here. We got all the uh, MO99 uh, that we had in there vacuumed now into our uh, tank. So Mr. George from GNL Services is going to be out uh, next win or this coming Wednesday, and we're going to get a capillary tube in there. Like I said, it's not something I've ever had. You know, most of them I ever work on. Um, you know, we put a compressor, uh, put a compressor in it, we roll. That one evidently had some trash. I don't know whether that happened from the customer doing it. I, it very well could have been. Um, could have been the compressor going nuclear that could have caused that. I don't know. I've never seen that. I've never had that problem. You know, it is what it is. Uh, Mr. George is gonna come down here. We're gonna get it, get it under control. So uh, we'll work on that on Wednesday. So the boys got this Schwintec motor in this rock wood that you saw that was impossible to get to that motor. Now, if you look right there, uh, let me turn it around and show you what I got. If you look right there, we actually drilled a hole in the fascia so that we could access the screw in the fascia. And then I got the look and like, what am I gonna plug that with? Well, then I found these little plugs in one of the old uh, power panels that I had of sitting over there. Um, so we drilled it out a little bit more, repainted all that, fit in there perfect. Um, you know, I don't know what else to do on that. It's just 
you know, again, the manufacturer kind of, kind of a bad deal right there because they kind of made that where you couldn't, you know, there's no access to that. Let me take in here and show you what's going on here. So now you can see how tight that was. I mean, there's no room. There's no room whatsoever over here. I mean, you can't even, you can't even squeeze a small guy. You can't even get Brandon in there. I mean, there's no room. And you can't slide across the top of this thing to get way over there. I mean, they just really didn't think that through very well. The other, the other project Mr. Agent's been working on in here is this, uh, this uh, Coachman Class A. Now remember, this bunk right here has got motor problems. There's a motor over there and there's one over here and they use the Swintec motors. Now, here's the bad part. Here's the motor out of the one side. Here's the motor out of the other side. This thing ended up, this thing ended up having two bad motors in that rack. Now he's got it working, he's got it working perfect now, uh, but it had two bad motors and all this fascia had to come off to access those motors. Um, but the real bad part was those crazy motors were like $900 a piece. I mean, it's just, it's just crazy the money for some of that stuff. Uh, but that's the way they designed it. I mean, they just use those Swintec motors that everybody just loves. So he got both those motors in yesterday. We got that working. Um, they were waiting on an awning spring uh, that came in or a slide out topper spring that came in uh, yesterday. So they'll be finishing that up today. Now, this wind sport, we've talked multiple videos about this. This is the one that, that uh, you know, again, been gone for over a year and they bring it back there's mice damage in there i've got everything to a point now where when you actually turn the pump on in here with the joystick the slide on the button comes in and out so there's still another wire somewhere up in there that has failed so you know it's just i didn't really get a chance to work on it last week because we had so much uh, being a short week after Memorial Day weekend, we had we had a lot of phone calls, a lot of emergency calls. So I didn't really have a chance to work on it last week. Um, I got to run to Knoxville this morning, pick up a part, and then I'll be back. And hopefully I'm going to work on that today, but it's just, you know, it's still here. So got to try to get that figured out and get that out of here. So uh, we're going to go around and look a few more things. I got to run to Knoxville, so we'll, we'll get back and we'll hit some more. It's one of the other projects the uh, boys are working on here. We've got this big Providence class a motor coach that had a uh, awning that got damaged and so we're trying to get this fixed up but the issue is we're running into is the medic don't make that anymore let me show you what our problems are okay so you can see where the old arm was and it was mounted to a bracket and then the gimp rail for the awning was way up there and this is a monster of an awning. It's got the metal weather, metal weather guard. The problem is if we mount this up here like it's supposed to be, look at the gap behind that because it's got a mount on that plate way up there. So it's gonna be a little bit of a nightmare. And then of course this has been damaged. It's been pulled out. So, yeah, we're gonna have to probably shim this thing, but you can see the, how much gap is right here for it to sit on that plate. And you can't let it sit any lower than that rail because of the slide out topper. So the awning's gotta sit up that high to be able to clear that one. But with that metal weather wrap, you can't have too much of an angle or it won't be able to roll itself up. So on this big Providence right here, they've got the awning finally mounted. You see what we had to do there. You see what we had to do here. This is the only option we got to make this work because of all that that's going on right there. It's just the way it was done back in the day and the medic does not support this anymore. So the only viable way to do this is this right here. So 
They've got it finally mounted. It's been a little bit of a nightmare. They're gonna go in there tomorrow and get the uh, new awning installed. All right, let's check out on this open range and see where they're at on this. Now you can see they've actually got the flooring back in. Mr. Adrian's done a real nice job on this. As you can see, it's all, all down. And then he's actually got the back all down. We're laying the carpet down here. We're going here and clean this carpet a little bit, but it is down. So got a little bit of carpet that goes, runs up through there. And remember it was around that. And then we'll LVP this tomorrow. So coming along real nicely on this one. Okay. So this one here, George from GNL service and I've been working on this. We did put a different cap tube in it. They didn't have the exact size cap tube. It was going to take a while to get it in. Uh, so we just we used what they had. It was supposed to be within the ballpark or what this needed. It obviously is not right. Um, our our suction pressure is still a little bit low. We're still at about 30. We need to be at 60. We did get compressor one. Zone one's working great. So the gentleman's got to get back to Texas. So he's just going to take it. He knows what kind of cap tube size he's got to look for back in Texas. He's going to take it on and do his thing. We did fit, finally figure out that it needed 35 and a half ounces of Freon. Uh, we got the uh, we got uh, stage one rolling and 35 and a half was kicking. So we're good on that. So he's gonna grab it and head on back to Texas. Well, good morning, welcome back, it's Thursday. As you can see, the big Providence, they did get the awning taken care of on that yesterday. Uh, come to find out the uh, controller, the uh, the old A&E controller had a problem. So, again, that stuff's gone, guys. It's, some of that stuff's just, I mean, at what point? So, we went in there and just wired in a switch where he can roll the on and in and out. I mean, it's just that's just where we're at. Um, so, that's done. I did work on that wind sport yesterday. Uh, spent probably an hour and a half on the phone with, uh, with HWH. Uh, we did determine, and I did find it. I'll have to go in here and show you guys where I found it at. There was a, the trigger wire going back to the pump in the rail in the floor was the mice had chewed it. So I had enough wire I could pull it back through and I was able to repair it. Um, so we've got that. We've got signaled to the pump now. So man, what a nightmare. That thing has just been a chore trying to figure out what's going on and again, Mice, mice do damages on that kind of stuff. But saying that, Mr. Lewis has started on this Crusader right here. Several videos back, we talked about that. We just, we've been waiting on the insurance company to approve it. Uh, this one here has got severe mice damage. Um, you can probably see the, the pecs I've got sitting right there uh, that Mr. Lewis is gonna be using to go in and re- plumb that the bad part is we really don't know the 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 how bad the damage is we've got to go in here and fix the docking station with the water and then get water on it and then try to see what else is what else is broke on i mean it's just we don't know where the bottom is but didn't get a ton of uh video done yesterday i had literally 39 phone calls on my work phone i talked to a bunch of you guys thanks for calling i I do like talking to you guys, but I did have a lot of phone calls yesterday, so I didn't get a lot of video done. Uh, the basement air from Texas, the uh, dual thermos you saw us working on, it's funny. I had reached out to the medic uh, back on Monday to have Miss Heidi look through her archives of old stuff, and she never could find out how much Freon that unit actually took. George, Mr. George from GNL Services, him and I went in there. We guessed at 35 because that's where the uh, capillary tube unfrosted looked like everything was doing good um, she emailed me last night late uh, she had found in the archives a 34.5 so mr. George was on it he had it that was uh, that's years of knowledge right there uh, that mr. George has just gotten again you know I normally go by the tag we weigh it in we've never had a capillary tube problem so I don't know it was a good lesson for me you know, I, I don't know it all. Mr. George does though, so he was good. He figured it out. So we're good on that. So um, I'll show you what's going on as we dig into this. I'll get over here on this uh, wind sport, kind of show you what's going on with that. Uh, Mr. John is actually doing 
you know, we're gonna try to get some stuff. We got some old lumber we're gonna try to get burned this morning. And the open range. We're getting to a point this morning where he's getting ready to start laying that LVP down in the floor. So we'll take a look at that. So uh, let's go around and take, take a look. So I'm back in this wind sport, working on this HWH slide. Now here's what I found out. There, the slide was not working because the mice, that wire runs through the floor, up underneath, comes up, up underneath here, goes up in here, up the wall. There was a wire that was chewed in two between there and there. And I had enough wires, you can see right here, enough wire right here from the factory that I was able to push it down and repair the line. What a nightmare. All right, so obviously there's more going on than, hey, I picked it up a year ago and it don't work. Um, you know, the mice get in there, they eat stuff up, they chewed up the wires. Uh, what a nightmare to find. Now, we did have the bad control board on the joysticks, remember with the little springs I showed you several videos back that had a problem. We got it replaced, but I can't help the mice. Just got in there and chewed it all up. So I've got everything on the hydraulics working now. Uh, the springs, it really needs a set of springs on the HWH. It's having trouble pulling them up. I have to have that conversation with the customer, but the slide, both slides are, are working. All the jacks are going up and down. Um, I just gotta, we gotta do a seal tech test on it. Cause they, they were saying it was leaking a little bit up on that area across the turn bar on the front. So we're gonna go in there, do a seal tech on it, check everything out, uh, recheck all of the systems on it. But I hope, God willing, and the cows come home that the hard part's done. I mean, this thing's been a, been a daggum nightmare. So there you go. Keep the mice out of your campers. All right, so Mr. Lewis has been working on this Crusader. Now I'm trying to do a video right here and you see who's making all this noise over here. Cousin Geary working on a refrigerator. Mr. Lewis has been working on this Crusader with the rat damage. Now, so far, so far, this is what he's come up with as far as mice damage. Uh, let's go inside. He's, Mr. Lewis has got some stuff he wants, he wants you as the viewer to see. Now, one thing that we found was that is all chewed up. But let's go up here in the front bedroom. This thing does have a, a washer and a dryer uh, up here in the front. So Mr. Lewis has been water testing Look what's been going on down here. Them mice have been having a good time down in here. Look at all that stuff. It's just, they've just been down here chewing. So, yes, that is all chewed up right there. Let's see if we can get a closer in here. Look at all that. <laughs> So obviously, Mr. Lewis has got his hands full trying to get all this checked out. Of course, we hadn't even got back here where the washer and dryer's at to see what's going on there because we can't even get water up here because all this is flooded. Um, he's been checking all this out. There's a hole right there. And what'd you find out with the kitchen sink, Mr. Lewis? Oh, look at the drain under the kitchen sink. Okay, let's go in here, check this out. Oh yeah, they've been in there chewing on that. So yeah, they've, uh, they were in here having a party is what they were having. So as you can see, they've been having a good time in here. Uh, this has been, this has been party central in this camper. So we got to, Mr. Lewis is just trying to get, you know, water to places to see. And he actually had water coming out in that cabinet up there. So we're in there cleaning the carpet out because we thought we had everything underneath fixed and then he's putting water to it and we're finding even more. You know that was part of the that was part of the agreement with the insurance company was they they given us a certain amount of time to go in here and diag and try to find out what's going on but i mean the further we get into it the bigger the mess is so that's the way that goes uh he's just going through and trying to fix what he can then we'll keep checking another little project that we've been working on is we did have a a super c come in that was having been having some aqua hot problems and Aquahot did end up sending us some parts. 
So Mr. Brandon and Dylan are out here right now working on that. And look here, it's my first camper in my, in my overnight spot. So they've got it over here working on it. Let's go check it out. So Zaquahide had a high temp sensor that was giving problems. So they're over here now working on getting it changed out. Okay, so we got the new sensor on this uh, 400D Aquahot, and it still shows a burner fault on the recorder. So as soon as you go in there and reset the, reset the fault, and the computer resets, the recorder resets, it comes immediately back. Of course, I called Aquahot. Oh, we've, we've never seen that problem before. Really? I'm the only guy that can't clear a fault? Let me show you what's going on here. Okay, so you can see we've got a fault right there on the screen. So we're gonna hit that. There's our fault. We're gonna go into faults. You can see burner failed to ignite. Okay, let's just go in here and do a reset. Now obviously you gotta hold that for five seconds. Now when this resets, it's gonna turn off. I'm gonna hit it. You're gonna see in the fault place that it's gonna say okay. And here in just a second, it's gonna change to fault. Which again, comes back to burner failed to ignite. Okay, so this thing's been here. This is probably the fourth time he's been here with an intermittent problem of this thing not working. Now, you saw the code it was throwing. Uh, my, my thought process was maybe the uh, control box for the, um, uh, for the actual motor maybe had a problem. The, uh, the Wabasto portion of it maybe had a problem. So I went and got, I ha actually have a I actually have a, an extra one that we use for testing. So I went and got it, plugged it up, did default, same exact thing. So yeah, at this point I'm just, uh, again, it's brand new. I mean, I don't know what's going on. So I'm gonna have to wait and get a phone call from them. They were gonna turn it over to their tier three guy. But at this point, I, you know, I don't know if there's something wrong with that recorder maybe there's another sensor problem i mean again we've been fighting this for four months now it's a brand new unit so and and, and that thing when it left last time you know we've had the we've had the wabasto portion of it off uh readjusted the igniters checked fuel pump pressure um new nozzle i actually put a new fuel filter in it but for whatever reason that recorder is just not turning on that wabasto so i don't know maybe there's a problem in the in the in the recorder uh, again, I don't know. I'm gonna have to wait and see if they call me back here on the aqua hot as you can see We do have the we do now have the Wabasto heater out now yesterday This thing came on and ran for a second. It was spitting and sputtering and it stopped. I smacked it on the end It started running uh, The customer last night stated that because he stayed in our campground last night that he went out there once and did the same thing hit it on the back and it started running now the only thing that could be going on is either we got a motor problem or there's the motor leads have these little barrel connectors back inside here that we can't see, but we've got to go in here and pull these screws out and pull this, separate this from here to expose that motor. So we're going to go in here and see what kind of the butt connectors look like uh, and see if that's what we got going on. So Brandon and I have gone in here and verified that the connections were good on this and we're going to use our little tester right here to apply power to the motor because what we want to verify is that and I'm going to run it multiple times here but I want to make sure that there's not a bad spot in this motor because if it is we need to replace the motor Next thing we're going to do also is I'm going to have Brandon put a clamp on meter on here so we can see what kind of amp draw we're getting.
So again, without any load in here and without any, uh, you know, no fuel pressure being pushed through there, the motor running by itself is only pulling like 2.78 2. Uh, amps. We went in there, inspected those wires, as you saw. We ran the motor uh, with the test box. You know, at this point, slapping it on the back, I, I did crimp the wires down so we were a little tighter going in. At this point, if we put it back in and he slaps the back of it, I would say it's got a bad motor. So Brandon and I are going to go out here. We're going to get it put back in and we'll see what's going on. Well, so as you can see, that big class C that we had in our overnight stay in campground is gone. He's on his way back to Texas. Um, hopefully they can get a part for him down there for, from Aqua Hop. But as you can see, I've got a big fifth wheel in there. So next week, I've got a special guest coming up here to Shelburne RV. Gonna be staying in that camper for four days while he's doing some training with us. We're actually expanding into a uh, into a new market that's new for us. So you're just gonna have to watch. You have to tune in next week. I'm sorry, I can't tell you, it's a big surprise. So you get to see what goes on next week, but that's gonna be that's gonna be a busy week next week. So we got that going on. It's late on Friday, so we're getting wrapped up here. We're gonna get out of here today. Uh, thanks for all the phone calls. Talked to a bunch of you guys this week, so I appreciate all the phone calls. Thanks for all the comments. I enjoyed all the comments this week. So thanks for watching. Please go on and like and share. We're doing good, guys. We're we're getting close to that 1,000 mark, so thanks to everybody. Special shout out to my new friend over in Sweden. I actually had a customer contact me about a Winnebago basement air. He's in Sweden looking for parts. I've got all your parts, no problem. We got it here, Children RV. So thanks for watching, thanks for commenting. Have a great weekend. Please like and subscribe. And remember this video is what? Cousin Gary approved. Cousin Gary approved. You guys take care.